welcome back to the channel designers. My name is Mike Pickett. Now in this video, we're gonna take a look at something that I think causes a lot of new Illustrator users some stress. And that's masks. So there's three different types of masks that you can use inside of Illustrator. And rather than try to cram them all into one video so that you've got so many different things to understand, I'm gonna break this up into a three-part series. So in this first video, we're gonna take a look at clipping masks because I think it's the simplest one to understand. There's not a lot of steps involved and you can get to know this one rather quickly. The next video, we're gonna cover opacity masks. That one's a little bit more labor intensive. There's more to understanding it. There's more things you can do with it. So I, I think it just deserves its own video. And then finally, we're gonna come back and we're gonna look at one of the drawing modes that uses a mask, which is the draw inside mode. All right, so three different masks, three different videos. This is the first one. Now, before we get into that, if this is your first time here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I put out new videos every week on vector logo design, how to use Adobe Illustrator. I've expanded into doing some Photoshop tutorials and we're getting into InDesign very soon here on the channel. So I hope you'll stick with me. Now I'm done talking about all of that kind of stuff. Let's hop over into Illustrator and get started on how to use clipping masks. Okay, designer, so here we are inside of Adobe Illustrator. Now, I just went ahead and created just a quick sort of brochure mock-up or pamphlet mock-up for Prime Rate Financial Services, which is a company and a logo that I made up just for logo practice. So here's the issue. What I need to do is I've got this white space or this open space here, and I want to place this image into it. So in order to do that, I need some areas of it to be hidden. Now, this section up here is easy enough. I could just pull this over and place it in behind. And because these are solid colors, it's not gonna matter because nothing's gonna show through that. But if you see down here, I've got this transparency on this and I want the image to show through those sections. I also want these areas to be cut off because I want it to be hidden in behind this shape. So let's start by creating our mask shape that we want to use. I'm going to move this back out of the way again. I'm going to use my pen tool, so I'm going to hit P on my keyboard. You can also come up and just click on the pen tool up here. And I'm going to start by just clicking here and working my way around, building out the shape that I know I'm going to use as a mask for this shape or for this layer. So that should be it. Let's just double check, get a little bit of a notch out of it here, which is what I want. So now I have my mask. This is the shape that I'm gonna use. So I'm gonna drag my image back over and get it kind of roughly placed. And I want it down a little bit more. I'm just gonna nudge it a few times. Like that. App on there and I wanna kind of see the side of his face just a little bit, nothing, I'm gonna have to have all of it on there. Okay, that's good. Now I want to make sure that this is in the back and I want to make sure that the mask is the top layer. Now it doesn't need to be the very top layer in this case because it just needs to be above what we're masking out. If you think about this in terms of a coupon, so if you're clipping a coupon, right, it's a clipping mask. If we're clipping a coupon out of a newspaper, the part that you're cutting out is what you want to keep. So where your scissor marks are, think of this line as your cut line. Anything inside of the cut line is going to stay. Your coupon, you want to keep that portion of it. Anything outside of it is going to be hidden or be gone. Now it doesn't actually cut the image and I'll show you that in a second. So we've got our clipping mask selected. I'm going to go shift command and my right square bracket. And that's going to bring that right to the very front. I'm going to click on the image and just go shift command left square bracket to make sure it's at the very back. Then I'm going to select both of them. So I can shift click on the mask. Now, there's a couple of different ways you can do this. You can either right click and go make clipping mask, or you can also come up to object, down to clipping mask, and make. So you can see here the keyboard shortcut is also command seven. So because I'm here, I'm just gonna hit make, and there's our clipping mask. Now you see what happened here. It actually brought the mask to the front. So it pulled that image up. So now what I need to do again is just shift command, left square bracket, and it sends it to the back again. Now before I move on, I wanna double check just a couple of little things because we've got a little glitch down here. And if I zoom in, you'll see what I mean. So you see our line there? Just got a little out of whack and I want it right down in here. So I can actually alter the mask by just grabbing my 
direct selection tool, so the white key or the white arrow, grabbing that anchor and just pulling it over here and getting it aligned. And you'll see that that fills in now. So you can always make adjustments to your masks after you have them, either by using that method, or if you want to, you can also double click into it and get into this isolation mode. So from there, I can select just the mask that we used and I can make revisions to the single anchor points if I need to. I'm gonna put that one back real quick. Now you can also make masks to mask other masks. So if you see each of these, we've got all these parts that are kind of sticking out. So if I want to send this over to my client so that they can review it or give me feedback or critique on it, I don't want to do it with all of these sticking out. Now, if we're saving this as a PDF or as a JPEG or any other file type, you don't have to worry about this, but it's just a cleanup thing for me. It's just so I can kind of see what the final design is going to look like. A lot of times I'll also just take a screen capture rather than sending over PDFs or JPEGs. I'll just take a quick screen cap, send that over to the client. So we're going to use another mask here. I'm just going to grab my rectangle tool and I'm going to draw a box around here. I'm going to do the same thing over on this side. Just to show you how quick and simple this is. So again, grab both of those. I'm going to shift click on both of them. I'm going to go shift command right square bracket. Make sure they're both to the front. I'm going to highlight all of these, right click, make clipping mask. And here's the thing, nothing has been taken away from this. So every element of this design is still there. It's still editable. You can do that a couple of different ways. Again, you can click into it and go into isolation mode and make your revisions or change whatever you need to. And if you see here, when I hover over this, you see how that big square box with the blue X on it, that shows me that the image is still full size in behind that mask. And it's going to be the same for all of these shapes. So double click out. I'm just going to pull this one over into frame, highlight it all, right click, make clipping mask. And you'll see that if I click into this, my text is even still live and editable. So I can come back in and make changes. But now I can take a quick screen capture of this and send it over to the client. Now, before we move on, before we get out of this one, Let's talk a little bit about mockups and how we can use these files inside of mockups because a lot of people are having some difficulty with this, I think. If you're wondering what a mockup is, let me just hop over to Photoshop. This is an example of a mockup. We're sending a real world example or a real, real world sample to our client for them to see kind of how this is going to look final print, copy, ready to go. I've used these for quite a long time and it, it took my logo design process from having to do revision after revision after revision to pretty much 90% of the time having the client pick a logo right off the bang. So I'd send over two or three copies or two or three versions of a logo, all with mockups, then being able to see it in a real world example, they can make a quick decision on it and know that it's, it's right for them. Now one issue you're gonna run into though, is if we grab this Illustrator file, and we're working with all the masks. So I'm just gonna copy this, Command C. I'm gonna hop back over to Photoshop and we're gonna to go to the file that we need for the mockup and I'm gonna go Command V and just paste it in as a smart object. If you remember that big square with the X in the middle of it for our image, that's still there. So you'll see what ends up happening here is when I paste it in, that image is coming out to these boundaries. So now you're gonna to have to guess and try and fit this and hold down shift and stretch it like it, it's just such a pain so before we get to the fix for this i just want to give a quick shout out to mockups-design.com this isn't an affiliate this isn't a paid sponsorship i just really like a lot of the mockups that they have on this site it's a great site they're all free and just some really nice looking work like this tray with the business cards in it candle mockups uh, pull out banners. I mean, the sign shop that I work at, we still do a ton of these every year, so it could be a good one for you to have. Full stationary mockups. Make sure you're going in, having a look, mockups-design.com. Read their licensing information. They've got information here on how to use their mockups, get in touch with them. Great website. And again, this is not affiliate link. You'll find a link down in the description. Okay, let's get back into Illustrator. So this time what we're gonna do, instead of copying this, I'm just gonna go up to file. I'm gonna go down to export and export as. I'm just going to save these onto my desktop. Uh, let's just go prime rate postcards. 
The key here is you want to use this little tick box here. So use artboards and what that's going to do, it's going to save this to the exact artboard size. Now. I went ahead and grabbed that mock-up. It's not exactly the same size as what I designed, but it's gonna work for this example. So I'm gonna hop back over to Photoshop. I'm gonna go up to File, down to Place Embedded. The difference here, Place Embedded and Place Linked. If you're sending files out and it's a working file that's going to a client or a working file that's going to another designer, you're gonna wanna use Place Embedded. That's going to make sure that the image that you put in here stays with the file when you save it as whatever file format and then you send it over to somebody else if it's a PDF or if it's a PSD. This is now embedded in the file itself. Place linked is just going to place a link to it and it's going to remember where that file lives on your hard drive. So if you send that linked PSD file or PDF over to a client or over to another designer, they're going to need that same image to be sent along with it so that it links together. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm gonna go place embedded. It's one that I use the most. And we're just gonna grab the front of that card. I'm gonna go place. And then we're gonna do kind of the, the biggest sin you can in graphic design. And I'm gonna stretch this to make it fit in this little block. Good enough. I'm gonna double click on it and then just nudge it a little bit here to get it to fit inside. Now I'm gonna go Command S and that's gonna save that for me into our mockup so then I can send this over to the client and they can see how their brochure is gonna look printed without me actually having to print it. All right, designers, so that's it for masks. Hopefully you've learned something in this one. I'll see you in the next video. I gotta get back to work, so get out there and design something and share it with me. I mean, tag me on social media. You can find all my social media links down in the description. Love to see what you guys are working on, especially if you're learning stuff from the videos that I'm putting out. Anybody else have like multiple versions of Illustrator and Photoshop installed? I like to keep the old ones just in case.